History of the Philippines, a book by David P. Barrows. So, before we move on, let's just have a little bit of disclaimer. This book review is intended to pique the interest of the future readers. On the other hand, not everything is included to avoid spoilers, but we need to pick the parts that we believe to appeal to the liking of the future readers. So, now let's move on to the presentation of the main points. The summary of the book comes first, the author, the main idea and the supporting details, the intended purpose, the use of sources, the author's approach, the evaluation of the book, and lastly, the memorable aspect of the book. So, let's move on to the summary. I would like to call on Ms. Erica Faye Paris to give us a little bit about the summary. Start with the summary. The book not just primarily narrates the history of the Philippines as if telling the important events happened through the course of time, but rather, it tackles the history of the Philippines in a broader perspective on how the happenings throughout the history of our country influence the world. Thank you. So now let's move on to the author itself, Mr. David P. Burroughs. The author of the, the, author of the books is the David P. Burroughs, a doctor in philosophy, who was an American anthropologist, explorer, and an educator. He was assigned to be the general superintendent of the public instruction for the Philippine Islands. Based in the Philippines, it took him two years of preparation for this book due to simultaneous writing and exploration to the parts of the archipelago. So, chapter one. Chapter one viewed the Philippines as subject for the historical study. It tackled the development of the Philippines and the Japan, where the author discussed the practices and the Japanese have done in order to reach the development and the progress that they experience today, where the intended purpose of this part is to wake up the minds of the Filipinos to seek the education not just for selfish desires nor for themselves but for the benefit of the people and the homeland. Moreover, the main discussion kicks off by, the define, by defining the meaning of the history then later discussing the historical accounts of the Philippines where he revisits the accounts of the voyagers up until the recent historical materials as of the writing of the book. Chapter 2 talks about the people of the Philippines, including the study of technology and also its unique characteristics of the mentioned groups. The following ethnic groups are mentioned here as the Negritos, the majority of the country's inhibitor, the Malayan race, the tribes in the northern Luzon in the Great Cordillera region, which are natural mountaineers, and the tribes in Mindanao, such as Etas, Mandaya, and Manobo. Chapter 3 leans towards the Europe and the Far East. As it reviewed the condition of the Europe and the East before the period of modern discovery and colonization, marks it and colonization marks its way. How the East had reached a condition of quiet stability and how the West Europe, on the other hand, had become aroused to an excess of ambition, ideas, inventions, and discoveries leading to the nation's activity and change. Chapter 4 The focus of this chapter is around the great geographical discoveries or the breakdown of the routes that the Europeans discovered to have an easy access to the East. It ranges from the Eastern Passage to India, the successful voyage of Vasco da Gama, all the way to the voyage of Christopher Columbus, where he reached the South America. Other than things mentioned above, one of the most significant discoveries is the Straits of Magellan, which connects the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, and all of this boils down to the discovery of the Philippine Islands. Chapter 5, moreover, it shows how the Filipino, before the arrival of the Spaniards, were in it discuss about the state of the Filipinos in different aspects, such as the condition of the culture, languages of the people, the system of writing of Filipinos, the early political and social life, the religion, and lastly, how the surrounding looks like before the colonization. Chapter 6 The chapter mainly focused on the expeditions to the Philippines which paved the way to the colonization of the country. 
Marty Daisy, with the knowledge from the voyage continued by El Tado, displayed immediately acted upon dispatching the first expedition to the Philippines, which did not turn out as they planned. After that failure, they launched the second expedition, which they made to the coast of Mindanao. Later, due to sickness and deaths, they decided to sail once more till they reached Samar. The interactions to the natives comes next until it came to the naming of the island, which is Filipina. Chapter 7 of the other end, this, the period of conquest and settlement from 1565 up until the 1600s. This chapter marks a new and the third expedition that conducted to the Philippines, which sparks the few major events. One of it is the Blood Compact and Bohol, the settlement made in Cebu, the discovery of the Great Islands of Panay, and the northern return route across the Pacific. Also, major development have been done over the span of years after the settlement, including the founding of the Spanish city of Manila, the first battle in Manila Bay, the conquest of central Luzon and the exploration of the coast of the northern Luzon. Chapter 8 The Philippines 300 years ago. The chapter kicks off by first discussing the state of the Philippines at the beginning of 17th century, then it moves towards the effects of the Spanish government under Cubans. The general improvements of the country under the Spanish rule have been mentioned. Upon the conversion of the Filipinos to Christianity, the arrival of the prayers comes next, then it marks the division of the archipelago among religious orders. On the other hand, the first schools were also established. As for health, the establishment of hospitals. More to this, the largest cities during those times are also mentioned. By the end of the chapter, it covered the decline of Manila during the next century. Chapter 9 at the beginning of the chapter, it leaned towards the happenings within the European nations. To further elaborate, it talks about the loss of naval power of Spain and Portugal, the Netherlands become an independent country, the forbidden trades between the Portugal and the Netherlands, the Dutch expedition to Indies, and so on. And to sum up, it narrates the uprising conflict, chronic conflict between the European nation as the other countries aside from the Spain is slowly gaining its power as the conflict rages on, it later shifted to the Philippines. Chapter 10 It talks over the century of obscurity and decline and the political decline of the Philippines where it delves to the downfall of the political significance of the colony and the, the degrading prof profitability of it to the state. The death of Governor Salcedo by the inquisition comes next. With the weakening of the government, it gave rise to the conflicts between the governor and the archbishop as the overwhelming power of the church surges on it slowly and up to the degeneration of the colony. After this, a governor of different type came and paved the way for the improvements of the current situation. Yet, the peace won't last long during the 18th century with the increase of Moro piracy. The little progress of the government followed by the death of General Arantia. In Chapter 11, this chapter tackles about the period of Europe European Revolution. In 18th century, the ideas and philosophy were greatly liberalized. liberalized. The philosophy became current, believing that men should follow the nature so that they could not do wrong. It became the natural law whereas it discusses the political and social concepts and also the theoretical foundation of many social rights. It is mainly consists of conflicts between the different countries, naming the England, the America, and the Spain, for their best prices of having the continent of North America and the Great Peninsula of India. France called the Spain to support and to join the battle since they were allied by blood, but in the end, England won. English victory is not yet ended. The English power was represented by the greatest and most striking figure. Sorry about that. Most striking figure in England's colonial history, Lord Shire. For him, defeating France is regarded as the England's greatest possession, but he is not contented. It also happened that he once destroyed the Spain power in our country. Defeating Spain, the Philippines became under the England's power. Lastly, 
It narrates the rebellions that happened in the Philippines and shows the effects of political changes of Spain in our country. In 1830, the liberal Spanish Cortes declared that natives and free inhabitants are equal in rights and privileges. This important declaration was published in our country. Chapter 12, The Progress and Revolution. It shows that this is the century of economic and social progress also aided by the opening of the port of Manila to foreign trade to progress other ports open to foreign commerce which open up to, to realm of possibilities as they continue to prosper once more. Educational system are established and piracy are being seized slowly. On the flip side of the coin, the outbreak known as the Cavite Revolt occurred and the spread of secret organization rise, late, rise then later on 1896 with the goal of seizing the Spaniards. A rebellion broke out and finally the Spanish misrule ended. Chapter 13 The arrival of the American marks the beginning of new era. Although the shadow of the new world state is surrounded by doubts and suspicions, but with a different approach, it earns the trust of the Filipinos. New Filipino government established, as well as the declaration of the sovereignty. But it's not far too long before another war broke out, proving that the ulterior motives of the America to the Philippines. So now let's move on in our insights. First, what is the intended purpose of the book? Here's Erica Faye Paris once again to discuss about it. The book is intended for the young men and women of the country, wherein the general is to aim is to introduce them to the broad and rich history of the Philippines. This book relates Philippine history to worldwide events like how the Reformation movement influenced Christianism in the Philippines and how Columbus's discovery of the America influenced the exploration in Asia. Next is the use of sources. The author used old sources of information such as the pre-existing historical accounts, letters, and official documentations. But out of many subjects that this book has touched, the author still managed to have an explanation and analysis on every sources that he concluded. Thus, reading the book is like immersing yourself, which make it enjoyable at the which make it enjoyable. At the same time, it doesn't fail to deliver the knowledge it conveys. The author's approach. A history of the Philippines is a good reference material because readers will find it a study that will stimulate their thoughts and strengthen their judgment, especially college students, since it is intended to introduce them to the history of their own island country and those who want to learn about the Philippine history as this book is really informative and entertaining. It includes a huge part of a history that nobody teaches in school. So the evaluation of book, evaluation of the book, it really opens my eyes as it includes the study of races and people's forms. It explains the relationships between the races as well as the differences of mind, body, and mode of living which different people exhibit. This book also filled in from how the Filipinos were living before the arrival of the Spaniards and all the blanks of nearly 400 years of occupation and attempted conquest of the Philippine people by the various European countries, predominantly covering the Spanish rule from the start to the end of the revolution and then cultivates at the first decade of the 20th century as an American colony. The memorable aspect of the book. For us, the most memorable part of the book lies within the chapter 12. Specifically, it is the start of the revolt of the Filipinos to the Spanish misruling as it goes to show the patriotism of the Filipinos to our country, the Philippines. And that concludes our book review. Thank you so much for listening and watching for us.